Welcome to the Highlights channel of the Ranveer Show. Quick fire, heavy information clips available for you now. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like this video and enjoy it. For the last question or last phase of this particular episode, so I got to bring you back to the levels of Tantra you spoke about. Okay. You don't have to expand too much on it. Okay. Just give the listeners an idea right from the start. Okay. Uh, in terms of, you know, where does it begin? And you said there are seven. Um, yes. Do you think that this requires another episode to really expand upon? There are hundreds of things. I can give you a brief gist of. Sure. And yeah. then let's do another episode at some point oh, about fine. it. But let's hear the brief. So look at Acharam as a stage of progress or sort of. So the stage of progress comes that first you start with Vedachara, where you do the Upasana in the normal way it is to be done. Okay. And they will tell you that you cannot, you should ideally do it in the daytime and follow the average restrictions of Upasana. Any deity you worship, doesn't matter. After that, you go to the Vaishnavachara, Shaivachara, which is that Acharam, which is basically uh, you have a more singular focus. So in Vedachara is basically uh, when there is Ganpati festival, you worship Ganpati. When there is Navratri, you do Navratri. When Shivratri, you do Shivratri. So you do all the Devata Puja, little, little, little. And you are starting to develop in a consciousness. And then you become more focused in the Vaishnavachara. Vaishnavachara is basically you put on the, you, you are dedicated Upasaka of some of the other form of Vishnu. And the Niyamas, the rules that come into that worship also employ get employed deployed in this stage and you can only learn all these rules and regulations through a guru a little bit through a guru but if you are in the tantric path specifically if tantra is what you really need to yes you will have that is where after this uh, i'll explain after this there's the shaivachara shaivachara is where is so shaivas are considered as somebody uh you know you study texts more you you not only practice but you also read the scriptures re relevant to the um of the path that you are in okay what does the accumulated wisdom for thousands of years say what does it mean okay what is the interpretation of it what is the tattu which is the philosophy that i'm trying to uh you know uh, uh, inculcate in my mind and through this practice and all that then comes dakshinachara this is where tantra properly starts dakshinachara dakshin means right achara means behavior okay the practice or, or, or a mode of behavior here you will need an initiation so tantras are clear that in this stage once you start doing Shakti mantras, worship of Shakti is the mother goddess. You will have to have one initiation from a guru, proper initiation. Okay. And there are terms, there are specifications of this initiation. There is Abhisheka, Shakta Abhisheka, Diksha, and all that is to be given. The whole point of initiation is that Shakti mantras work very fast. So, initiation, if you're if you're worshipping Shiva mantras, if you're worshipping Krishna mantras, then Abhisheka Diksha is not mandatory. You may have an Upadesha. Upadesha means just a verbal advice from somebody. Can, you can carry on. But if you have to go into Shakti Mantras, that involves Vija Mantras and all that, they work with tremendous speed. Okay. And they cause changes very fast in an individual. And naturally, nobody is, is able to self-regulate them. You will need somebody higher, somebody more experienced to guide you through those phases. And so the Abhisheka Diksha comes in, the Guru. And Guru means not just one individual, it is the Guru Parampara. Guru has a Guru, Guru has a Guru. So there is a line of Gurus. Even Lord Krishna had a Guru. The only being in the universe who doesn't have a Guru is Shiva. He is Swambhu. He, who was Lord Krishna's Guru? Oh, Lord Krishna had Veda Gurus. He had learned the Vedas from. Then he had gone, gone to an ashram in Ujjain. Uh, various other places. So, this text will mention that he also had to learn these things. He mastered them. That's a different matter. But he had to learn the 64 Kalas, the Vedas and this and that. All the Rishis were there to teach him etc. So, in the universe, there is only one being that has no Guru. And that is Shiva. Okay. He is the, he's the Adi Deva, sort of. Uh, but this should not be misconstrued as uh, saying that A is bigger or smaller. Human mind tries to do that. Absolutely not. Both of them are divine entities. Both of them are Purushottamas. It's another concept. We'll not go into <laughs> that. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, after this, you start your practice of the Dakshinachara Tantra. Dakshinachara Tantra involves mantra sadhana of your devata. Then there will be nyasas. Nyasa means you have to place uh, mantras in your body, different places. Uh, that's a practice. What, what does that mean? Write it. No, you chant certain mantras and you touch certain parts of the body and you keep doing that over time, months and years, not even months, years and years. Through resonance, your body becomes purified by those mantras and the deity will approach you faster. This is like a spiritual tattoo. Absolutely. And these, that is this from this stage on, secrecy becomes important. You cannot do these practices in front of somebody who is not meant to see that. Uh, after this stage, Dakshinachara, only difference with Dakshinachara is that you follow, uh, uh, so you you uh, you use standard religious ingredients. 
so you give a bhog bhog means an offering of food to the deity that you have to offer so normally what whatever we offer you know uh, uh, rice or whatever uh, vegetarian uh, ingredients etc you worship at specific times of the day day time you worship and uh, various other niyamas are there so it is also fully tantra upasana following the right hand path right hand path means which is the sort of parallel to the vedic path so whatever in vedic path is not to be done we also don't do it this path okay so you keep doing, and it's very powerful a lot of people have this misconception dakshinachara matlab it's simple not at all i have met gurus who are fascinatingly siddha purushas all dakshinacharis one of my gurus is a dakshinachara uh, upasaka and is tremendous i mean he's fantastic out of the world okay so as i say the thing is practice 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 it will work start working you will have experiences also then comes what is known as vamachara vamachara is the left hand path vamachara also requires a diksha okay after this after you have integrated dakshinachara upasana to the full then you start using the most infamous things in tantra for which tantra both has the curiosity and those who do not know they put uh, you know blame on tantra and things like that it is the panchamakara has to be used to the deity uh, offered to the deity panchamakara is five tattvas five representative tattvas which are meat has to be used okay mamsa then matsya matsya then mudra mudra specific grains etc matsya Mat fish fish then madya alcohol has to be used. and last is maithuna sex okay, sex but it is not like that ki tomorrow i just get one chicken tandoori and give no it doesn't work that way okay there are many various rules of this various rules each of these have to be uh, you have to do mantra upasana on these ingredients to purify them okay and then only offer and the, it's, it's highly technical and it's beautiful if you do it this way and you have to know which deity you have to you are giving it to so you cannot do shiva upasana this way by the way you cannot do krishna upasana this way but you can do the dasamahavidya upasana this way if you have the initiation if the guru has given you the permission then you can do all this and it is a lightning speed path i mean uh, those who have a negative connotation of tantra based on these are generally people who are outsiders of the field that's my perception and if it's a lightning speed path it can backfire yes well. that is why there are so many stages you are not to enter into it in day one in fact shiva lord shiva says in the kularnava tantra he says that this is this the vamachara or also known as the kolachara he says that the kolachara is the greatest of the acharas okay but if an unfit individual enters into it not only the shakti will leave him but he will fall into a state worse than he had started and i've seen so many cases like that people fail because of arrogance as well because no, arrogance again arro no arrogance failure due to arrogance is common to all paths uh, any path even dakshinachara also will give you a lot of power it's not that vamachara gives you specific power but certain deities upasana works very well if it is done in the vamachara paddhati paddhati means a method of worship so the failure happens mainly in technicalities and the fitness of it whether are you fit for that upasana not everybody see the reason first of all we have so many paths so many deities because different people has different have different tendencies so somebody is not fit for this upasana but he sees something and he feels that something esoteric is happening i just have to enter into it he is going to not doesn't have the self control for that he will he will fall it's not meant to have Uh, uh it's not meant for somebody who's not prepared so i it, there's no gatekeeping here i'm not saying that you cannot do i'm saying that you can do if you prepare yourself and that preparation is not about one day's time when we're talking about lightning speed again sir um the end goal is nirvana moksha here there is another very interesting huge topic this is end goal so end goal nirvana is there okay but there are other texts which tell you that uh uh there's something called samavesha which is the deity entering into you suppose you are worshiping lord krishna and tomorrow you reach a stage i'm just saying because say you are a krishna devotee you reach a stage where uh, krishna enters into your body and stays inside your body all the time so are you are you ranveer or are you krishna that is the ultimate state of the upasana so in tantra upasana also we are trying to reach moksha and all that is there that's possible but we reach a state where the as i was saying the deity has to be one with you to that extent that you are not you anymore and there is a beautiful statement that comes in the kamakya tantra where uh, parvati bhairavi actually bhairava and bhairavi are speaking they give the tantras in the conversational format is asking that uh, what about the shada darshana six philosophies of hindu dharma which is the main fundamental vedanta yoga this that six of them are there 
So uh, what do you think of that? Which is the best one? And Shiva is saying that I created those six philosophies so that they can keep arguing among themselves. You keep doing sadhana. You reach the state which is beyond the mind. And then you see for yourself what is the reality. What is there? Okay. So not to denigrate the darshanas. They are also beautiful in their own domain and wonderful thing. But tantra marga is upasana marga. You ha- until you cannot become a uh, you cannot become a tantra pasaka by reading books. You cannot become a tantra pasaka, tantra pasaka by hearing from somebody. You have to sit and you have to do. You have to sit and you have to do like this. For an absolute noob, hmm. where do you begin? Is there a book? Interest. You have to have a genuine interest. If you have a genuine interest, and you seriously want to worship uh, the tantric devatas. Tantric devatas means those devatas have to be approached finally in the tantric path. So what you can do is that suppose somebody is a upasaka of Kali, okay, likes Maa Kali. There are two ways in which you can approach Maa Kali. One is the, the proper, the formal way is Tantra Sadhana way, where you take an initiation, you learn how to do the uh, worship and all that. And the other is that, say there is a fitness for Kali Upasana in you, you can chant the names of Kali. So the names of a devata, be it Lord Krishna, be it Shiva, be it Kali, be it Ganpati, be it anybody, be it Matara, Ashtottara Nama, Ashtottara means 108 special names. Nobody needs any permission to chant those. You don't need a guru's advice also. But ha, you have to see whether it's a fitness is there. What I mean by that is somebody who's extremely soft-natured, very soft-natured individual, you give him the Ashtottara Nama of a Mahavidya like Chinnamasta, which is an Ugra Prachanda Chandi, which is extremely fierce. In 10 days only he'll get scared the experiences that will start. So that fitness judgment has to be basically there. That am I fit? Am, uh, is that there, that strength inside you in your heart to worship that deity? Yeah. That's common sense. As I'm not even saying anything complicated. If that is there, if you are, say, you want to learn Tantra Pasana, first of all, don't be in a hurry. Trust nature. Okay. If you, if you hurry, you will fall. That's absolutely guaranteed. So if you are a devotee of Maa Kali or Maa Tara even, so pick out any simple stotra or simple ashtottara nama, which is the 108 names of the deity. And these days, because of the age of the internet, everything is available. You just have to do a Google. That's all. And with devotion, without being creative, without being creative means, I know people, you know, little bit of tantra here and there, they read and they start tomorrow, they'll bring one bottle of alcohol and start. No, absolutely not. Simple way. In the Vedachara way you worship, which means that you give a normal vegetarian bhog, naivedyam to the goddess. Naivedyam means something of food offering, some little bit of water. You sit down, put one agarvati, put one diya, and you start chanting the 108 names. Keep doing that. Don't be in a hurry. Six months, six years, 60 years. If she wants it in one day, you will progress. She will send the right person, right connection, right base. Right situation. Right situation. Right Everything. podcast. <laughs> <laughs> right apps. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, I I strongly <laughs> believe that you don't make money out of these things. Yes. Um, I feel that I would like to believe that this is sort of the beginning of the age of light, as I was told by BK Shivani on the show. Okay. The world is changing. Mm. We, we're seeing it all around mm. us. Mm. And that's why we're seeing this resurgence of spiritualism. Mm. That's why podcasts like this are taking off so much. Yes. And I want to thank you for giving us one of the episodes of the year, sir. I don't know what we're doing, but I know that neither you nor me decided to make this a possibility. Yes. If you enjoyed this video, here's a playlist full of videos kind of related to the one that you just saw. Enjoy.